Shalom and welcome to Simmons of Torah. This year is entitled an Analysis of the Different Personalities in Egypt. I'd like to take a look at four different groups that were in Egypt during this period of slavery. We have Moshe, we have the Levim, the Jewish men, and the woman. And each group went through a lot. Their own struggles and challenges. One, you have Moshe. Fascinating upbringing, right? When he was born, there's something unique. They say the house lit up. They said something special, divine was going on. And amazing how the combination of his Jewish mother nursing him, and yet he was brought up in a regal royal background. And that, of course, gave him, it seems, the confidence and the leadership qualities to go ahead and take the next step in his life. In the previous year, we discussed the different qualities we see about Moshe's compassion for Jew and Jew and fellow, uh, fellow human beings and for the animal kingdom. And that was Moshe Rabbeinu with the royal background, the regal upbringing, and now he's ready for leadership. Then you have the Levim. The Levim go ahead and were never subject to the slavery. And therefore, it seems like they were able to be a bit stronger during the uh, mid-by years. And some of the times that the Jews had a challenge, they were able to withhold. And most uh, notably is the time of the Egel, where they didn't give in there. And, it could be that there are certain weaknesses and challenges that the rest of the Jews had as slaves, and they didn't have it. And then uh, the woman, they had that challenges living with their husbands as slaves, very, very hard times, bringing up the, uh, their children, their families, large, large families, huge challenges, though they didn't have the actual slavery. And therefore, when they physically were removed, were released from slavery in Egypt with their husbands, and they were able to really move on and progress and get into Eretz Israel. According to the Medrash, the, the women did make it into Eretz Israel. The men did not make it in. And then you had the men themselves who were slaves. They did not make it in. And uh, as, the, as the saying goes, you could take the Jews out of slavery, but can you really take the slavery out of the Jews? But it turns out a fascinating point. If I'm not mistaken, I think there might have been a rehabilitation program where God went ahead and put things into motion to go in and take those Jews out of slavery. And they didn't just physically leave. They left with nice clothing, nice jewelry. The Egyptians themselves said, here, please take everything. The Pesach talks about the kavod that they were given in Egypt as they were leaving. And Moshe Rabbeinu was held in such high esteem. It says that they saw the Egyptians dead in the water there by Yamsuf. So they left with feelings that we are the victors over here. And they're the victims. And therefore, it wasn't typical Jews leaving slavery, a person just leaving slavery. It was different. And God had a program to rehabilitate them, to make them overcome, help them overcome their slavery mentality. So you'll say, well, did it work or not? And they ended up staying in the desert and dying there. So I say it was partially successful. The fact is, yes, it was challenging for them. They didn't make it out, but the next generation made it. That's an amazing transition to go from slavery and then their children already are going and taking over Israel and fighting and conquering the land. That's an amazing transition. So you can have studies on different people who may have been subjected to slavery and other kinds of challenges for generations they can't get out of it. In one generation, the Jews got out of it. I'm wondering if that became part of our DNA to go ahead and withstand challenging situations and then move on to go from the Holocaust and then fight for the state of Israel. That would be one stark contrast where we're just victims, victims, victims for hundreds and thousands of years. Then the ultimate horror and we have a transition where we're going to become warriors again. So those are the four groups that we see. Moshe made with his regal upbringing, and then he went his direction. The woman had their challenges, but were not slaves. They were able to get into Eretz Israel, the first generation. Levine were not slaves. They were also able to get in. And the men had the challenging situation where it wasn't easy. They were slaves. And it was too much for them in that first generation in the Midbar to get out of it. But the next generation already got in. So it's a beautiful... Uh, story to look at all the different people involved and all the key players in this incredible time in Jewish history. Shalom.